is not just a very interesting and well-crafted plot. It, it's not just an, an interesting and uh, unusual topic. It is your, the skills that you are constantly learning. I still go to writing workshops and, and courses all the time. I went to one last week. I went to a poetry workshop last week. Isn't it? So you're always learning um, your craft. That's very important. Because the entertaining part of it, as I said, is not that people are laughing all the time. People be crying. Somebody who read my book recently emailed me and said, Sylvia Taylor, thank you for writing your book, blah, blah. And, and he said, I simply say this, I laughed, I cried, I was exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah. I could not have been more thrilled because I thought, bingo, got it. Because so you are completely drawn in. And that's the entertainment factor is not laughing it up all the time, and it could be, but that you are, what I call, in the dream. How many people here have been reading something, and every, you have to reread a page, mm -hmm. because you can't quite figure out, who was that person, where they come from? Something's bumping you out, bumping mm -hmm. you off. It's like being on a monorail, something bumps you off. Mm -hmm. And then there's another time where you're reading, and you come out of the, Disappear. Another world, you disappear mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. another world. It's what I call being in the dream. Mm -hmm. So, how many people have been uh, sitting and, and you know, see on the sky train reading it? It's like, what? How could I already be here? Yeah. The last hour was just yeah. gone. How many people have come to in a stone cold bathtub of water? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. No one to say? Good. Okay. That's what we're all going for is to bring people out of this moment that they're in, in their regular life, and bring them and keep them in the dream, whatever that dream is. Sometimes it can be a nightmare, and that's fine too. We want them to be in a nightmare. That's what we want. So that's the informed, inspired, entertaining, no matter what genre, you're, what topic, what plot, what slant you're using, those components all need to be there. Okay, so we've got, you know, working the six sentences, descriptions, the characters, dialogue, plot, anything else? How about point of view? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's POV, point of view. And point of view is whose eyes we are seeing this world. Through whose senses are we experiencing this world? Hi, are you here for the workshop? Yeah, come on in. I think there's, oh, there's a spot right there and a spot right there. Okay, great. Super, thanks. Um, and that's the point of view. Okay, so if you were to just look at that, I mean, there's, there's other aspects, but if you were to look at that list, what would you say that we're talking about here? What genre? Typically in the past, you look at it and say, oh, that's got to be fiction, right? <coughs> that's, like, that's what you find in a novel. Is it anything now? Um, so I was mentioning about the journalism of 50 years ago. If you were to go into the, um, the archives of, say, even the Sun newspaper, any newspaper you can imagine in, in North America, and go back and pull up an article, say a front page article of the Sun 50 years ago, and then take an article of today and put it next to it. What would you see the difference in? Anybody take, want to take a guess? Because that's supposed to be nonfiction. What would you see? What would the difference be? Because the writing style would be totally different. Very different. Anybody want to put out a guess in what way would they be different in those two different eras? So what I've noticed now is... Yes. Yes. What I've noticed now is reporters injecting description that almost first person their impressions yeah. whereas in the, mm -hmm. when I learned journalism you kept yourself out of it and you tried to be as objective as possible yes so you, you created that, that illusion of objectivity exactly yeah. and it is an illusion definitely and before your time a generation before your time would have been what I called dragnet journalism so if you know it, if you know the show dragnet yeah. And it's just like those old detective movies where it's only the facts now. At 3.03, the cat jumped through the window. At 3.05, he fell to his death. So, end of the article. Now, it's more like, as 
as the full moon rose over the peaks of the, you know, and the cat longed to join its ancestors in the great African savanna. You did purple though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So what's happened, even in journalism, is this this um, fusion yeah. of genres. So there isn't that black and white division between the two. And as I said, people like Ernest Hemingway and the, uh, a lot of the American writers and Canadian writers of that era in the 50s, the 40s and the 50s uh, started to change it. So that now what we consider creative nonfiction is it seems to be a very generic, generic way of writing. And so I ask you, what's the difference between fiction and nonfiction as far as stories is concerned? So what's the difference? It's all fantasy. It's all made up. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All made up. What do you think of that, folks? Uh, I would almost disagree because there's some things in fiction that are so based on reality, they're not mm -hmm. yes. entirely fictional. Mm -hmm. Yep. What do you think? Uh, how, does, how do people feel about that? So is it that in nonfiction stories, everything's all real? How about here? All made up? saying earlier that there's a mix in both. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Because what's going to happen here is in fiction, um, I would ask you, you know, to look in, your, in the novels you have in your home or in the library, and look in the back and look at the author's bio, and see how the bio may reveal the co you know, some form of the content of that novel. So, if everything is not is all made is all made up, then how come that person was a biochemist and has written you know a thriller novel about you know involving biochemistry? So what is the difference? So when you're writing your short stories, what's the difference between these two? The difference is that nonfiction purports to have a stronger element of what people consider truth and reality. So facts. Yeah. Whereas with fiction, you have more leeway to make up all everything you want. Everything you want? Anything. Are you? Yeah. you think so? How do people feel about that? In a novel, can you make up anything you want? Sure. Can you change the name of what the the L'Arc de Triomphe is called in Paris? Oh no. Then it's not the Arc de Triomphe. Uh, no, then it's not the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of leeway do you have? You can make up characters. But can you have um, non-fictional characters in it? Of course. Yeah, okay. Think about a conversation that you had a day ago, just 24 hours ago. And if you're going to write that in a, in a non-fiction short story, and you're going to write that dialogue, is that fiction or non-fiction? Ah, that's a bit more. Well, I would, sure say is. I would say it's more non-fiction because it's based on fact. And based on, on, there you go. And maybe just <laughs> exactly. exploit it into the non-fiction, yeah. or to the fiction. Part. So that's a key word, is based on. Okay. Because has anybody ever been in an argument with somebody and they said, that conversation that we had 11 years ago when we were in Paris, you said this to me, and then I said that to you. Is that true? Can you make that claim? Can that be real? Uh, depends on whether you remember it correctly or not. Can you say you remember it correctly? No. No, you can't. So what is it that we're really going for? Other than the real names, the real names of things. So I'm going to give you some names. So real names of places and people that really existed. So if you're going, here's the, it's what they call a contract, the contract you make with the reader. If in your nonfiction or your fiction, you're going to use something, make sure that it is very accurate. 
That's the kind of accuracy that's really important, no matter what you're writing. So you take that extra time to make sure that you are doing a little bit of homework and find out what that street is. Does that make sense? Or, what happens over here? Do you make up, like if you are in a location, are you going to make up everything about that place? Depends on the location. You, if you've created your own city, then everything can be fictional. If you if you start in Vancouver, you're better off talking about Robson Street to make yes. it more real yeah. to people. Yes. So this word I've written down here is speculative. When they say, they call it speculative fiction. That means that you've speculated on what a, this whole world will be. And that, you know, now you're starting to talk about fantasy <coughs> and stories and that kind of stuff. So it means that everything in that is you've speculated what that would be. So if you say it's like a fantasy world or if it's in the future or whatever, right? But if, even if you're going to make in these kinds of details up, you know, what people look like, what they do, where their homes are, what they look like, it's not, you don't just pull it out of the air. How do you make up those details? I use myself as a base. Uh, I, like, even writing this sci-fi I'm working on, when I'm trying to express what this individual is feeling and stuff, I pull from my own experience and mm -hmm. my own inner stuff. It's hard sometimes. It is. And it's also what they call um, extrapolate. And to extrapolate means that you have to take something that makes sense, and then pull it forward into your story. So it just doesn't come out no. You just, you know, just kind of throw it out there like, yeah, okay, on this planet the trees are purple. But why are they purple? See where I'm getting at? It's like you have to ground everything in fiction. It has to be grounded in reality. Does that make sense? So it all makes sense, because people are intelligent. They know they can feel that something just seems a little too far-fetched. So if you have your, you know, your characters uh, living in a, in a, a gravity-free environment, well, what is going to keep them from floating off into space? I mean, I'm being facetious. But things have to make sense. They do have to be grounded in some reality. So you've done your homework. 